Um, so I'm going to jump to the fiscal plan on page eight. There is a section called diversification across our economy. And I hope that you would agree with me that innovation is absolutely imperative to diversifying the revenue that um, the government receives. So um, in particular, bullet number two, $20 million a year by 2020, 2021 for the interactive digital media tax credit to uh, attract more tech entrepreneurs. Interactive digital media um, kind of sounds like 90s technology to me. And um, we already have a number of very successful technology companies. There is a, a successful technology cluster in Alberta. So we've got Bio, BioWare, Smart Technologies, Benevity, Athabasca University for uh, distance learning. This was was um, technology was integrated into their program years ago. So what? Um, like how, I'm not sure where the innovation is in this and how the next generation tech innovators are going to be inspired by this particular stimulus that targets the last generation set of platforms. Sure. It's uh, very much targeted at those that are existing in Alberta today and making sure we hang on to those and they don't leave Alberta. Uh, as I said before, they're being attracted to places like Quebec and Ontario by uh, similar or more or uh, uh, mo uh, similar kinds of tax credits. We're also investing in the stream of uh, training that will keep uh, places like BioWare and Benevity and other places uh, stocked with employment by uh, um, ensuring their spaces at uh, post-secondary institution 3,000 and... Okay, so I actually want to jump to that next because I think that that's really important. If the, if the purpose of that is to make sure that we have enough people that have the technical skills to be able to support these companies, then I would like to assert that we don't need to have necessarily 3,000 post-secondary spaces just for that. We can teach people to code without um, sending them to university or technical schools. There are a number of grassroots organizations already underway in Alberta that are doing this right now, and I'm thinking specifically of ones that target women, but it's certainly something that could be a lot, it could be done a lot more cheaply than going into post-secondary education specifically. And that kind of ties into how we're seeing um, a number of post-secondary institutions being granted university status. And it's a concern because companies like Benevity, they need more than the technical people. They need accountants, they need HR people, they need paralegal. Grant McEwen, in specific, um, has a paralegal program. Once they become a university or degree granting, my concern is definitely that those two-year programs that train people uh, to get a job right away will disappear in favor of higher revenue for the post-secondary institution. And I'm not really sure whether this strategy has been validated with the businesses and the other stakeholders, um, the post-secondary institutions, who uh, have have a concern in this particular area. So I'm, uh, I'm wondering, what is the expectation of revenue upside for the government out of this strategy? Um, I was wondering what the question was a while ago there. <laughs> um, I can tell you that uh, this strategy uh, was the result of the Economic Development Trade Minister, the Advanced Education Minister, working very closely with the current industry in Alberta and uh, the post-secondary institutions. So the upside for the province of Alberta will be uh, those businesses that uh, take advantage of of uh, the 25% eligible labor costs through this tax credit, staying here in this province, investing in this province, and uh, obviously their workers uh, be staying uh, Alberta citizens and, and paying taxes here. What I'd really like the government to, um, I'd like to encourage the government to do is to take a look at those organizations who are up and coming and who are actually innovating. What I see here is a strategy that focuses on those companies that are already established. Mm. And, and I take your point that there is a concern about them leaving the, the province, but I don't know if that's necessarily going to be the most effective strategy overall. And there is so much happening in the innovation space in Alberta where I really think it's it's hugely important for the government to have those close relationships and to be able to put 
good policy in place when transformational technologies come along. While I have a lot of respect for these companies, I don't see that they're going to be um, transformational in how they affect our, our society, but there are definitely lots of people developing technology that will have that sort of impact, the kind of impact that we saw with Uber, and trying to implement policy after that's already been released in the wild is um, puts the governments at a disadvantage, and I would assert that it also puts us at a risk of governments becoming um, irrelevant, where a, a company has transformed how a society works without the collaboration with the government, and all of a sudden it's like, well, we really don't need a government anymore. So I, I, uh, I, I would really I apologize that. for the interruption.